This video is about Amazon CloudFront. Amazon CloudFront is AWS its content delivery network. It is also called CDN. Amazon CloudFront improves the read performance by caching contents at edge locations. The edge location is the data center that is nearest your users. Edge locations provide reliable, low latency and high throughput network connectivity. As you can notice in the screenshot, the content from the S3 bucket that is in Australia AWS region is viewed by users in North America and Asia through edge locations using CloudFront distribution. CloudFront edge locations are connected to the AWS regions through the AWS network backbone, which is a fully redundant network with tens of thousands of networks with 100 gigabit bandwidth. This helps improve origin fetches and dynamic content acceleration. There are 400 plus edge locations. Requests are automatically routed to the nearest edge location. Edge locations are not tied to availability zones or regions. You can notice in the screenshot that in addition to edge locations displayed in blue color, there are also regional caches displayed in orange color. Regional edge caches are CloudFront locations that are deployed globally, close to your viewers. Let's see how you configure CloudFront to deliver your content. First, you specify the origin servers. For example, CloudFront gets your content from an Amazon S3 bucket or your own HTTP server. These contents then will then be distributed from CloudFront edge locations all over the world. Next, you create a CloudFront distribution, which tells CloudFront which origin servers to get your files from when users request content through your website or application. Next, CloudFront assigns a domain name to your new distribution. You can also add an alternate domain name to use instead. CloudFront sends your distribution's configuration, but not your contents, to all its edge locations where CloudFront catches copies of your files. By default, each file stays in an edge location for 24 hours before it expires. The minimum expiration time is zero seconds. There isn't a maximum expiration time. We talk about how CloudFront is AWS CDN, and it uses AWS edge locations to cache the content to improve the read performance. Now let's see about the CloudFront origins. We mentioned the origin on the previous slide. An origin is a location where content is stored and from which CloudFront gets content to serve viewers. When you create a distribution, you specify the origin where CloudFront sends requests for the files. You can use several different kinds of origins with CloudFront. For example, you can use an Amazon S3 bucket, an application load balancer, or an AWS Lambda function. S3 bucket is a very common origin source for CloudFront distributions. For example, organizations can improve the read performance of their static contents, such as images and videos, stored in S3 for global customers. There is a concept of origin access identity, OAI, through which CloudFront provides enhanced security for the contents. The origin access identity is a virtual user identity that will be used to give your CloudFront distribution permission to fetch a private object from your origin server, for example, contents in an S3 bucket. Let's see how CloudFront provides security to your content. It provides DDoS protection to your content as you can integrate CloudFront distribution with AWS Shield. You can also integrate with web application firewall WAF to provide security at the application layer by analyzing each HTTP or HTTPS request at the application layer. It can expose HTTPS externally and can be integrated into internal HTTPS backends. Let's look into AWS CloudFront use cases. CloudFront can speed up the delivery of your static content, for example, images, style sheets, JavaScript, and so on, to viewers across the globe. You can use CloudFront to serve video on demand or live streaming video. You can encrypt specific fields throughout system processing. For example, in addition to HTTPS security, you can add field level encryption to protect specific data. Running serverless code at the edge provides reduced latency and helps you customize the content. For example, you can return a custom error message when your origin server is down for maintenance. That way your viewers don't get a generic HTTP error message. Now let's look into AWS CloudFront pricing. CloudFront charges for data transfer out from its edge locations along with HTTP or HTTPS requests. Pricing varies by usage type, geographical region, and feature selection. Amazon CloudFront is also available in free tier. In the free tier, you get 1 TB of data transfer out per month, 10 million HTTP or HTTPS requests, 2 million CloudFront function invocations, free SSL certificates, and no limitations. All features of CloudFront are available in the free tier. Okay, so let's get a hands-on understanding about CloudFront, okay? So this is CloudFront homepage, but uh, first we need to create S3 bucket. 
to so that we can hold our files for our CloudFront distribution. Okay, so let's type here S3, search for S3. So this is S3. So now we are at S3 homepage, right? S3 console also we can see. Let's click on create bucket. And here we have to give the bucket name. Let's give bucket name. Um, I, have, I will copy paste this name, which I already have here. So this is my bucket name. Let's scroll down. So this bucket will be Northern Virginia region, which is my default region. Let's scroll down. Let's have everything as default, what, whatever it is right now. And click on create bucket because it doesn't matter. So we, we need to create bucket. So CloudFront demo is important. So we just created bucket. So click on this bucket now. The bucket has been created. Now upload a few files for this demo, right? So I'll click on upload. We'll click on add files and these three files I have. Um, we click here, select these three files. So now these three files we uploaded, click on upload button. So right now these files are getting uploaded, uploaded, succeeded, click on close. So if I click here, say index.html file, and if I want to see it, right, I can hit here um, open. And so it is displaying index.html, but not these two files. The reason is that since the bucket is not public, so I cannot see these two um, images, okay. And, uh, uh, and secondly, is that uh, if I, uh, there is another link, if I take this object URL and paste it into here, um, I'm getting this access denied. Reason is that bucket is not public, so I cannot view it. This one I was able to view index.html because AWS pre-signed it, this URL, because I am the owner of uh, this bucket and AWS allowed me to view the index.html file, but not the uh, these two uh, uh, files which are under these bucket, right? So there is no direct access to them. And so that's reason because these are the, uh, these two files are Part of the index.html so index.html there is a link there so since these two files are not public so i cannot view them okay so now how to fix it how to get these two files displayed uh, from the uh, uh, so so how to display these two files right how to display index.html right so for that we will create amazon uh, cloudfront distribution so let's go and click here cloudfront um, okay so this is CloudFront. So we'll create CloudFront distribution to uh, display our uh, uh, bucket uh, bucket content, which bucket contents which are not public. Okay, essentially index.html file and those two uh, files that are uploaded there, right? And it, so what Amazon CloudFront does? Amazon CloudFront is it securely deliver content with la with sorry. So Amazon CloudFront, what it does essentially, it it's a securely deliver content with low latency and high transfer speed. Essentially, it's a, it's a caching service. So let's create on cloud distribution. And for domain or for origin domain, let's select this guy. So we'll be, so this will be the origin domain. This from this is where this distribution will picking up the uh, source origin. And uh, name is fine. For origin access, public is not because our bucket is not public. This is the legacy one, leave it as, as, as it is. Pick this one origin access control settings recommended and for origin access control we click on control uh, create control settings and these all things are fine click on create so now the control settings has been created so let's scroll down scroll down okay scroll down here settings add item only thing here i need to give here that index.html is the root file right so what happens if uh, when we access CloudFront distribution um, using its uh, uh, DNS name. So it will go for, if you don't provide index.html, right? If you don't provide the particular file, so this this will this file will be displayed. Essentially, it will work as a home page, right? Work as a root object. So, so this is fine. Let's click on create distribution. So now it's telling that S3 bucket policy needs to be updated. Right, because right now there is nothing in the bucket policy. Our bucket is just uh, it's private, right? There is and there is no access policies given. 
So we'll copy this for policy file because we need to allow CloudFront to access that bucket, right? So we'll copy this policy and there is a shortcut here. If I click here, I can go directly to the policy, which is very good, actually very handy. So now, um, so I can click here and uh, nice, sorry. So what happens is that, uh, so this is the bucket policy. If I click here and I can paste the policy that I copied there. So this is bucket policy. And what it says is that uh, allow for this service CloudFront, right? So we are allowing CloudFront to do what? To access, re access to do get object on for all objects, right? A star under this bucket, okay? And this is the condition. So this guy, this is the dis this distribution, which is this distribution can access um, uh, all the objects under this bucket. And this is a cloud front okay so with this let's save the changes so we created the policy okay policy is created now let's come to cloud front um, and this is the cloud front now so so if i come to distribution and if i come here right so right now it is deploying so we have to wait right um so once it is deployed then we can use this uh, domain name right uh, DNS name for this distribution to access the our uh, bucket content. Okay, so so let's refresh. So it's still it is deploying. Let's wait for a few minutes. So now our CloudFront is distribution is ready. Okay, so let me copy the domain name and open a new tab here. Um, open a new tab here okay and I can see that both images are displayed here okay so this and also uh, for example if I give here nature one this is my one file okay um, APG so this is the first file and if I give here two so this was second file right and um, and this is my index.html, right? And if I didn't give index.html, still it will display because I have configured it that my root object is index.html. I think got the idea, right? So now if I refresh this page, right? What is happening is it, this, this content is getting from the cache, not from that is not hitting this S3 bucket. So that's the beauty of the cloud front. Okay, so we first time we hit, it went there, got it from S3. Then it was cached in CloudFront. So subsequently, uh, because uh, subsequently now it is displaying from the um, CloudFront cache. Okay. Okay. So if I go back to CloudFront and come here on the left side, and if I click on distribution, if I click on origin, so the content is getting displayed from the from the S3. Okay. So you got the idea. So that's it for this demo, and I hope you understood how CloudFront works. And uh, I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next lecture.